Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service to celebrate Pentecost. A welcome to those who are at home, probably chosen to stay at home on this wet day, and to those who'll be following the service, either through the YouTube or, of course, through the CD recordings. It's my great pleasure to, to welcome you all for this special celebration, which will be led by our minister, the Reverend Alistair Jones. Fiona is just going to give us um, an encouraging request to support one or two events that are happening for Mission Possible. Thanks, Colin. Um, there are two things that I need to quickly tell you about this morning. Um, both are fundraisers for the Mission Possible Redevelopment Project. Uh, the first is an organ recital taking place a week today, that's Sunday the 12th of June, at 3 p.m. here by Paul Hale. He's a, a renowned organist and a, a former organist at Southern Minster. Uh, he's great and he loves this organ, so uh, it should be a really excellent afternoon. Uh, the second event is, I think, a world first. Um, we're holding a sponsored musicathon which involves filling the church with music for 24 hours. Um, it will start on 10.30 on Saturday the 21st of August, and it will finish with the start of the service at 10.30 on Sunday the 22nd. Um, the church will be open for people to come and listen during Saturday morning and afternoon and early evening, and then overnight, people can have the building to themselves uh, to come and play or sing without an audience. There's a sign-up board in the coffee bar. Uh, you can sign up to play or sing for half-hour slots, or more than one if you like, and we're welcoming soloists, family and friends groups, and larger groups. Um, if you'd like to take part, please sign up and take a sponsor form from the envelope and the achievement for sponsorship will be collective, so we're going to do this between us rather than individual. Uh, if playing or singing isn't your thing, you can still help. There are also sign-up sheets for serving refreshments at the coffee bar and for just being around. Um, we'll need someone on the front door during the day to welcome people and hand out programmes, and at night we need, should have a minimum of three people in the building for safeguarding reasons. I'll be here all the time. Um, <laughs> and Aidan has promised to stay overnight as well, so we can keep playing between us, whatever happens. Um, what there isn't on the board is a sign-up sheet for sponsors, because I think it's better for people to keep their donations private. Um, but if you'd like to sponsor the event, please speak to someone taking part. They'll all have a sponsor form, or to me. Um, we're hoping to raise money through sponsorship, through um, audience donations and also we're going to try and get some corporate sponsorship from local businesses and it's going to be well published and publicized in local media to raise community awareness of what we're doing so hopefully this will be a big one in terms of fundraising um, we've decided to specifically target the musicathon to raise money for the organ the restoration and modernization um, partly because it's easier to get corporate sponsorship for a specific thing, which is a community asset, um, and partly because we need to know what's happening with the organ before the architect can finalise the internal designs. So ideally we want to retain and overhaul the pipes, but have a new electronic console at ground level. And that's the ideal, but if we can't afford to do that and have a ground level console, then we'll need to retain access to the organ loft for the organist to use, and so obviously that affects the, 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 how the design pans out. So that's, that's the logic for doing it that way. Thank you for your time.
Good morning. I'm very sorry for the croakiness of my voice. I have had COVID and it shows. Uh, unfortunately, Jenny still has it, uh, which is why um, I won't be touching the elements when it comes time to have communion. Claire will be doing that. I will still be doing the words, but she will uh, break the bread for us. And I will not be taking part in the distribution because the very last thing I want is to be distributing COVID around the place. Um, similarly, I think I have to say, please put any strangenesses uh, in the sermon due down to that. I uh, obviously am not to blame for any heresies uh, or whatever that emerge, he said desperately. Um, so yes, I mean, to sh show uh, how badly uh, my brain is a little fogged at the moment, I called Martin Steve earlier. Uh, very, very major apologies, Martin, uh, who is doing wonders on a day that, as he says, is full of words. So uh, we uh, need perhaps to give him a little more time to change uh, slides and whatever than is usual. It's also a joy to have the choir uh, leading us in worship, both in that introit and later in an item called No Gilded Throne which fairly obviously has a resonance at the moment. I hesitate today being what it is outside to say long may she reign, um, but uh, we do of course think of that. Also I have been asked uh, that in our prayers we should hold, <coughs> hold Malcolm and Diane um, within our thoughts and love because they cannot be with us today because they are dealing with a major family crisis. So please bear them in your thoughts and prayers during this coming week. God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We sing hymn number 394, Spirit of God.
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Gracious and holy God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. Your spirit gives light, but we have preferred darkness. Your spirit gives wisdom, but we have been foolish. Your spirit gives power, but we have trusted in our own strength. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your son, forgive our sins and enable us by your spirit to serve you in joyful obedience to the glory of your name. Amen. There is now no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thanks be to God. Faithful God, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending your Holy Spirit and opening the way of eternal life to all the human race. Keep us in the unity of your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear no gilded throne. I'll just say a couple of words about the anthem. It was written especially for the Queen's Jubilee and is being sung by choirs across the Commonwealth today, which is why we're taking part. Um, it has been put together as a set of words from the Queen's speeches over the last 70 years. So everything that you hear has been said at some time by the Queen in one, one of her speeches. So. That, that's why we've chosen it. You'll probably never hear it again, so uh, enjoy. <laughs>
Thank you all for that beautiful rendition of the words of a woman of great faith. Thank you. We hear the first part of our reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Now, of course, we frequently have heard down the years of the gift of tongues. Uh, though I speak in tongues of humans and of angels and so on. But please note, this doesn't actually talk about a gift of tongues. It talks about a gift of ears, because we all hear them speaking in our own languages. It's a matter of the perception of what is going on, not simply the delivery. And perception, as with so many things, is vital to our understanding of what's going on. And here it's a matter of bewilderment. Because what it says quite clearly is not there was a mighty rushing wind, is not there were tongues of flame. It's a sound as of a mighty rushing wind. And there are things that look like tongues of flame flickering upon the heads of those disciples. They haven't the slightest idea what is going on. Even the participants in the midst of it all, touched by God in the presence of the Holy Spirit, have no idea what they are doing, no idea what they are seeing or hearing. And it's no great surprise, therefore, that the crowd listening to them are quite bewildered as well. Now, we know the list of countries, don't we? where the people came from. I'm sure you can all recite it by memory. And if I had a map here, I'm sure you could all show me where Lycia and Pamphylia are. No? Because, of course, what is important is not the list of countries, is not the precise positioning of them on an ancient map of what we now call Turkey. It's a matter of the perception that here there are a mighty crowd and they are listening and they are starting to hear the wondrous words of God. They're having a gift of ears. They are hearing that which astounds them. But please note, the reception is not universal. Everybody isn't saying, we hear our language. 
quite a few of them are saying, these fellas are drunk. You know? They've had the new wine. They're babbling incoherently. As ever, perception is everything. It's a matter, really, of what you are prepared to hear. Are you prepared to hear God's word? Are you prepared to hear it in the midst of a chaos of voices? Or do you simply perceive human gibberish? Now, of course, being good Methodists, we never have anyone under the influence, do we? No, no. I have to say there was one church uh, that I used to minister to in London where, unfortunately, we had one steward who frequently was there in the morning under the influence of gin. He drank very large quantities of it, and the people didn't realize when, after he fell and broke his arm, they said you should take more water with it. They didn't realize he really should. But the reality is, when you're dealing with people who appear incoherent, so often it's easy to label them. It's easy to dismiss them. So it was a matter of, did you have ears to hear? In the midst of everything going on, God speaking to you. We sing hymn number 377, Down the Mountain. Hear the second part of our reading. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, 
raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Thank you. And so we hear from the prophet that there are no limits on who the spirit is given to. No limits on who can receive the Spirit. That there are actually no limits to the very concept of the Spirit's blessing. Because you might very well expect to hear the voice of God through someone steeped in wisdom and full of the years of experience and maturity. Couldn't you? Yeah? Don't you think, looking out, I see people who I can seriously say, I can hear the voice of God speaking through age and wisdom? No? Of course I can. But am I also prepared to listen for it in the voices of those who will come in later, our junior church? Am I prepared to hear it in other languages? Am I prepared to hear it from people who I don't expect to hear it from? Because we are being told the Spirit of God has no limit. Just as we hear that the gift of ears is all important. We expect to hear God from some people. We expect to hear the Holy Spirit speaking through them. But if we are going to hear the full voice of God, we must be prepared to hear it from those we don't expect. We must be prepared to hear words that can enlighten us from whatever source. No, these people aren't drunk, as you suppose. These people are full of the Spirit of God. They are anointed with God's holy power and wisdom. And I think it is truly important that we pray for the gift of ears. That we pray that we may hear God's word in each and every voice that God sends. There was one lady over in Toten, Iris. Yes, I see nodding at the back, yes. Iris, who was generally regarded by quite a few people as a flipping nuisance. Susan Holmes told me a very important thing about Iris. All she wants is to be listened to. And so I did. And she was not a nuisance. She was a woman of wisdom and of God. We need always to say what is going on within this person. 
How do we hear the voice of God speaking from them? It's not always easy. It's not always in accord with our preferences. But we must listen, for we must hear the voice of God telling us what we, as individuals and as community, can do for God in this place. And when we hear it, it won't be as though we're drunk, but we may find ourselves drunk on the power of God. We come to our prayers of intercession. Gracious God, whose spirit helps us in our weakness and guides us in our prayers, we pray for the church and for the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew the life and faith of the church. Strengthen our witness and make us one in Christ that all of those around us may hear your word. Your word that goes beyond ours Grant that we and all who confess that Christ is Lord may be faithful in your service and filled with the Spirit that the world may be turned to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the nations in the ways of justice, liberty and peace and help them to seek the unity and welfare of all people. We pray for all leaders within this world, for those who lead even in the face of massive difficulty, in the face of war, in the face of crisis and agony. And we give thanks for the Queen and for all the work that she has done down these years. Give to all in authority wisdom to know and strength to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in sorrow. Heal the sick in body or in mind. And deliver the oppressed. And we do pray for Malcolm and Diane in their issue. And all the work that will be needed to bring help and healing. Deliver each of us, we pray, from the crises we face. Grant us compassion for all who suffer and help us so to carry one another's burdens that we may fulfill the law of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks and praise for all who have served you faithfully here on earth, and especially those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. May we and all your people share the life and joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to stand as you are able, only as you are able, and we profess the faith of the church in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were meant. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I don't normally invite you to stand to uh, say the creed, but I think once in a while it helps to mark a difference. I don't know about you, but I do believe that we need edges of difference to actually give us deeper understanding. Recently, Jenny and I were involved in an online, well, the term is webinar, it's a seminar online. If ever people have been going around wasting their time inventing words, <coughs> yes. And it was a matter of talking about ministers preserving their wellness. Again, another word, but there we go. And it was very obvious that the two people leading it had not the slightest idea who ministers were and what they did. Because partway through, one of them said, and you know, Ritual is quite important. Yes, it is. Ritual is important and the edges of things where we start to understand God acting in different ways is vital. We sing hymn number 393. 393. She sits like a bird brooding on the waters.
O oh Lord, receive our offering, receive our lives. We pray that giver and gift alike may be blessed by you and used for your purpose within this, your world. Amen. The young people will join us in a moment. Before that, let me say, it is a wondrous thing to take part in Holy Communion. It is an amazing thing, because in it we have, yes, a ritual. A ritual that has blessed the church for 2,000 years. And we find ourselves a part of the greater story, the greater story of the church facing changes, facing hopes and fears, facing a world that is in need, a world that does bring challenge and choice and in which we may actually find ourselves with a degree of peace and of joy. Because I don't know about you, but there are times when joy can seem very far away. But when we remember that we are receiving bread and wine in token of Christ, then, even in the midst of pain and difficulty, we may know joy. For those who are joining us via Zoom, if you wish to get bread and wine, or some food and some drink of some nature, so that you too can participate within this act of communion, then you hopefully will feel truly blessed, as we do. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy gracious and holy Father, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. In the beginning, your spirit swept across the face of the waters, bringing order and beauty out of chaos. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. Though we turned away from you, your love remained steadfast and you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Saviour of the world. At his baptism in the Jordan, he was anointed by your Spirit and revealed as your beloved Son. In the power of the Spirit, he was sent to proclaim <coughs> good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. Sharing our human nature, he died on the cross. Raised again in glory, he lives forever to pray for us by the gift of the Spirit whom you have sent in his name, you bring to completion the work of your Son, leading us into all truth, making us a people for your praise and giving us power to proclaim the gospel in all the world. 
And so, with all the faithful of every time and place, we join with choirs of angels in the eternal hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Would you like to remove the cloth? On the night before he died, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of all his mighty acts, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves as a holy living sacrifice. You send forth your spirit you bind us in love. You renew the face of the earth. Pour out your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him and with one another in mission to all the world and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. As usual, when you are invited to come forward, please come in. We plan groups of ten and do spread out across the whole of the front so that you may be served as swiftly and efficiently as is possible. We come with joy to meet our Lord. Receive the holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and feed on the Lamb of God with reverence and with faith. Would those who are distributing like to come?
The feast is prepared. Come and share in God's goodness.
Let us pray. God of power, may the fullness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 397, perhaps predictable today, the spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. The spirit of truth lead us into all truth. Give us grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God, Spirit, Son and Father, remain with us always. Amen. We go into the world in the power of the Spirit to fill, uh, fulfill our high calling as servants of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.